Divas, just wanted to let you know on this continuing Easter project, this glue project, uh, I wanted to show you that I've eliminated three glues so far on different reasons. The first one I eliminated almost right away was the E6000 spray. I didn't realize at the time that you needed to spray both sides of an item and let them dry a little bit before you stick them together. Now this is a fantastic glue. It works on larger surfaces. It doesn't work on tiny little surfaces and ones that you can't spray on two sides. Um, so what I would use this for, and I will use this for, is if I have like a woodcut or something, um, a base, a larger base, and I have fabric or something else to put together with it, a larger, another larger size, what I would do is spray both of them, leave it out for a couple seconds to get sticky, and then carefully put one over top of the other, and that will stick. That will do very well for that. But for this type of project, it doesn't. Um, I recommend this glue for other projects. E6000 spray adhesive. Okay, that's the first one. The second one is this. The ult Aileen's The Ultimate. Now, this is good in small quantities. It is very good at keeping the diamonds in place where they belong and doing it quickly, fast set. But it smells horrible. It smells awful. I will continue to use this for like jewelry, small pieces that I know a little dab will do ya, and things like that that I needed it cement right away. It's like a super glue. It does it quickly. It does it thoroughly. And it does a great job. But, you know, I would do it outdoors or in a well-ventilated area. And I would only do it just a drop or two at a time. Not a whole line at a time and then do it a couple lines in a row. And bleh, it smells horrible. It's the Aileen's The Ultimate. And it does what it says it does. It's a great glue. But don't use it indoors. Don't use it on large quantity items. That's the recommendation on that one. And uh, <clears throat> let's see. On another one that I've eliminated for smell only is the regular E6000. Amazing E6000. Again, it's a different scent than the first one. It does work perfectly well, but it, oh my gosh, it's just, the smell is just awful. Um, it's a little bit better than the other one, but not by much. I mean, everything I put on here, it stays, and it grabs fast, and it does what it says it's going to do, and it keeps it on. It's nice and solid. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's nice and solid. So I would use this, and I will use this again, but I will use this on small areas, in a well-ventilated area again, and I will not use it on larger projects uh, unless I'm sitting outside at the kitchen to, you know, at a picnic table or something. Uh, I will not use it inside again. All right, so that's the regular E6000 glue. I've only eliminated it for this type of project. Now, if you're doing a large thing, like a, a large chest or uh, something that's very large, just do it outside. <laughs> that's all I, can, all I can recommend at this time. All right. The other one, and I said I have three, but it's a fourth one. The, the reason I'm eliminating this mainly is because I'm running out of it and it stays sticky. This is the E6000 Extreme Tack. And again, I would use this for uh, jewelry. This does not have the smell that the other two do. But it stays gummy. Like even now, I can move and reposition some of these little uh, beads on here. And it stays sticky. And I said it before when I was working on the woodcuts that it, um, I have to put powder or some kind of thing over top of it afterward so that it doesn't stay sticky, that it doesn't stay gummy. And that's the only thing that I have a problem with this in. It's called Extreme Tack, E6000 Extreme Tack. 
repositionable glue. It's the repositionable gel. Now, if you don't want it, it eventually sets up hard. If you want to be able to get to the end of a project and still be able to move a few things for a little while, it's perfect for that. So there is a, a great use for that. It just isn't this. It isn't small items. These other glues are better for that. Okay. And while I'm on it, all right, that's one, two, three, four glues. This is the fifth glue. I'm only eliminating for this project as well. Now, this is the dollar store gel glue. I will still use this on woodcuts. Although it's um, very watery and it lets some of the, the uh, diamonds float to the top. And it's hard to see when one likes to float over top of the other one. Part of the problem is these are not flat surfaces. As you can see, it kind of curves over the end. And I put a two or three on the end and it started sliding down the side. It's so gooey, it's, it's so watery that the thing started sliding down the side. So I'm going to be finishing these with one of the other glues. Which glues do I have left, you ask? Glad you asked that. I have Aileen's Jewelit. It comes out white, and it is a little more watery than the, the next two I'm going to show you, but it sets up quickly. Okay. Another one is Aileen's Clear Gel Tacky Glue. Sets up very quickly. It stays clear, and it's awesome. <laughs> And the other one is Beacons 3-in-1 uh, Advanced Craft Glue. I got this at Michael's as well, or Joanne's one of them. It's a 3-in-1 glue. So these three are the ones that I am using. I'm going to be finishing up the other projects with it and continuing to work on the projects that I have with it. Uh, they're wonderful for this type of project. And by this type of project, I mean something with lots of different shapes, some hills and valleys, and um, need to set up quickly because of that. And once they're set up, it ha gives a little bit of give, but after a couple hours, it's solid, solid, solid. So I like to use those one of those three on the projects that I want to finish, okay? So I'll probably finish these little guys today with one of those glues. I'm not sure which one. And we'll continue on with that. So I'll give you another update when I'm all finished. All right? Thank you, Divas. Hi again. I know, I know. Look at this messy desk. Well, I'm still in process but I uh, with the glues. I can show you a couple finished. And I've eliminated... I've eliminated all glues but one for this particular type of project. Uh, you heard just a minute ago when I eliminated most of the E6000s, they just, ugh, the smell and just the gumminess and lots of things having to do with that. But I want to eliminate two others and I'll show you why. Um, I want to eliminate the Jewelit, the Aileen's Jewelit. This is, again, great on flat surfaces. It is great for little projects. It's milky white. It's very thin, so it slips around. And if you're using tiny little drills like this, it they seem to get lost in the whiteness of it. It does dry perfectly clear, which is no problem. But uh, you end up putting some drills on top of each other that you really didn't mean to do that because you can't really see if you've got it on top of each other. So, But for flat projects, for, for big chunky things, gluing to you know, bases or something like that, this is a fine glue. Uh, and I use it, I still will use it a bunch of times. Or if I just want to dab, dab in to um, to fix something that may have come loose here or there. It's a fine glue to pull out and use. The next one I'm going to eliminate <clears throat> is the Aileen's Clear Gel Tacky Glue. I like this stuff. I like it a lot. It's just that it's very thin and the 
the um, drills like to slide when you're using it. So you can only use a small bit of it, where is it, a small bit of it at a time. You can only use a, a patch of it at a time or and let it dry real hard. I mean, I could do practically an entire uh, an entire creature with the one I'm choosing and not have a problem do a small section, move it to another section and just keep moving on and on and on with it. And I, I don't have a problem with it. But I like this glue. I like how clear it is. I like it for many reasons. I just don't like it for anything where the drills, these tiny little drills are going to slip and slide on an uneven surface. Having said that, I want to show you um, how far I've gotten so far on Crystal's little um, unicorn. I've gotten some purples in here where she colored purple. I got pink where she colored pink. I got orange where she colored orange. I put a little purple heart on the middle of the back. So um, I'm going to put some other things in here. I did part of her tail orange. So I'm going to do the yellow and the pink in here too uh, and, and finish up some spots where it needs some filling in. I got a little farther on the bunnies. I get the cute purple, the cute little pink feet, and the pink cheeks, the little black and crystal eyes. These, these are just 5200 ABs, or you could use 3865, the color ABs. These are what I'm using for the top of the ears, though, are the little pearls, are the little half pearls. Okay. And you have to be careful. Um, they like to flip over, just like the regular drills. And if they do flip over, then it takes some of the coating off the, the top of the, the shininess. So I'm doing this. Uh, these are a little bit at a time as well. And the rest of these are all ABs, just the top. The ears are pearls. It's very difficult to get in between the ears. I'm doing it all. These ears were wider than these for some strange reason, and I was able to get in between these ears a lot easier. But I just, I just keep using my tweezers and my wax stick. It's almost down to uh, nothing of a nub right now. I have to sharpen it again before I keep, continue to use it. But uh, I will continue doing these until they're finished. I want to show you, I'll show them to you at the very end of this video as to, um, you know, as to what everything is finished looking like. These are the ducks. Somebody suggested that I put, make one of them yellow. I am still making them both white because of the white base, but I found some yellowish off, off white, kind of like a cream color. A B, so I'm using that for the for the um, the wing, and the wings are the flat white too. These are just plain white A Bs. Okay, the only shine on it is the nose and the wing. A, you know the A Bs for the wings that I'm using. I'll show you them at a different time. I finished the stars. Now one thing, I, this is the glue that I decided on the three in one, the beacon three-in-one glue. It's a clear gel glue. You can see what you're doing. It has a very light odor. Uh, you know, if you can't stand any odor at all, use the Aileen's, the Tacky Glue clear gel. But I use this. It has a very light odor and it's not, uh, it's not a problem at all. The only thing you might want to be careful about is if your drills, your gems or whatever flip over you get kind of these dull spots uh, if when you you have to flip them back over immediately if they're going to be upside down in here you flip them back over immediately because this sticks strong and it sticks quickly and it kind of puts a hazy if you have too much of the glue down or if these flip upside down in the glue and you turn them over, it'll have a hazy look to them. So replace them instead. But these, I got my two little stars done. I only did the top in the um, the gems, 
And these two are adorable. Absolutely adorable. I put the light yellow wings on them. This one has is the pearl, the half pearls, and this is the yellow ABs with uh, orange um, gems as the little nose and plain black 310 dots for the eyes. And I did put the little orange jewels on the piggies, <laughs> the little toes. These are so sweet. These are just, they're absolutely adorable. And I haven't had any drills come off of them yet. I haven't tested the, the light in underneath it, but you'd have to pull out the, the paper that the bat makes, lets the battery have a contact in there. So that way you can turn it on and they will glow from inside like the rest of these things will. Uh, I do find the other thing that might be a little irritating with this is you know how when you use a hot glue gun and there's strings sometimes? Once in a while you will find thin strings coming up from this and uh, all of a sudden when you lift up your 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 wax stick, your pen, you'll have a trail of a couple of the beads following you up, um, which is not a big deal. It's just a little bit of annoyance, um, like I said. So this is the glue I'm going to use to finish all the rest. I'm actually going to order another bottle of it. It's Beacon 3-in-1 Advanced Craft Glue. It's clear gel. Uh, it's waterproof, acid-free, instant grab, fast dry, and it does. Uh, that's what I love about it. If you're going to do a project that has a lot of curves to it, a lot of uh, angles and curves and movement to it, you're going to need a fast grab glue. You're not going to need one that's going to have the drill sliding off the end of it as it's waiting to dry, which I found is the major problem with all the rest of them. So this is like, this is perfect for that. The E6000s were good for that as well, but they smelled too bad. They would be up in my top contenders as well if their smell was pleasant, but it's not. So I just wanted to show you the update on this, and I will again show you things at the very end. Um, the, the thing is, I wanted to show you a little bit with the ducks, is the roundness of the head presented a problem. I started on the front by going between the eyes and on top of the nose, then I went around underneath the chin to the neck and I kept building like a circular thing around the face and when it got to half of the head here going in the same pattern single row at a time I started building up the back I started adding rows like in between like if you would put a straight row in you'd have a partial row above and below it then you put another straight row in and a partial row above and below it that kind of thing because otherwise you know you're going to have that's what I mean about a partial row it doesn't go all the way over it has a few at a time and then it has um, it makes a bump rather than a straight um, a straight line because you're not going to see the back as much as you see the face as long as the face is fairly uh, nicely done you can mess a little bit on the back and I try to get it as straight as I could, but you have a bigger, wider area and coming into a small point on either side. So you have to make fan shapes in order to get around it. So I found that to be the easiest way to still keep the lines pretty straight, but just adding some things. And I was experimenting with putting the different wing on there before. Um, and that's kind of what I did on these little guys on the back. I, I did the straight rows up to the face. Everything was straight. And then I did straight rows down the side, straight rows straight down the back. And then it's kind of like a gusset, you know, kind of a short row. You make the wider and wider into a triangle shape in this place where it had to expand and in this place too where it needed to expand. And that's pretty much it. Um, there's no way you're going to get them completely straight rows all the way around because of the geometry of it. You know, the bottom is bigger than the top. So you can't get straight rows all the way around. It's just the way it is. 
okay? So I wanted to show you these and when I turn on the video again for you and edit all this together, you will see all the completed projects. These and the flat things that I've made and um, the other ones that I have light, the little lights in them. I've given a couple of them away already, uh, but you'll get to see all these finished and I get to have them off my desk. <laughs> all right. Thanks for, thanks for coming by. Hang on there a minute. Hi, again, just want to give you a quick update on where I am on these little guys. Um, on the rabbits, I got the back of their heads finished and the back of their ears finished. And I wanted to show you, um, basically, okay, all the face, you know, I started her out with the nose, did a big circle, and then I went underneath the cheeks and around here, and then I started going in lines down the side and that's how I put them on in lines down the side. Now you see how the cheeks are going to be wide and a straight line down here is going to be different than a straight line down here. It's smaller at the top, wider at the bottom and then down here then closing it again. What I did was I put like a straight couple straight lines in. I started in the center back and then moved the straight lines around until it started to bend weird then I would put a, a half line in, then make a full line around it, another half line, make a full line around it, until it was flat again, going over to the side. It ends up being that there's li a line of gussets here, like, you know, when you, when you have an opening like this and you have to fill in the center, it's like straight, but it's got a little bit of a pocket in the middle, and you've got to fill in the center. Uh, that's exactly what it's going to be like on the fatter parts of the head. I haven't yet done the body, <laughs> but the it ends up that the ears are that way too. There's a little bit of a gusset right at the bottom of the the ear, right in here, this part of the ear. So I need to work on more of those, but I ran out of AB whites, so I have to wait <laughs> on getting some more of those. On the unicorn, I added different colors. I ran out of the dark teal, so I went with the light teal above it. And what I would just do is um, I'd put in as much of a straight line as I could and then bend it around with the gusset when I needed to. The same thing, the trickiest part is in between, getting in between the legs down here and in between here in this area when it's tight, when you have some tight uh, areas, and that way I needed to put something in with the tweezer and push it into place. Because even the little tip of this is too fat to get in between some of those areas, so I had to get in there with the tweezers and move it in there. Um, the glue is working out well. I put a couple hearts, a little purple heart up here, a little pink heart on the side, and I put a little yellow heart right in the front. <laughs> I'm not going to do the whole rest of it in yellow. I'm debating as to whether to leave the rest of it in white the way it is or to put the clear glass crystals in it. Okay. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'd like to hear your comments, what you would do down below. Would you put in the white ABs, or would you put in the, the uh, clear silverish crystals in it? On the edge of the angel wings, this is what the silver looks like. So the whole thing would look silver in there, or we'd leave it white, kind of like the duckies. Uh, it gives it some texture, the way the rest of it's going to have texture. So that's an idea, so leave that down, your comment in the, the comments below, what you would choose. Okay, now these are with non-ABs, and what I chose to do on the wings is, I should have picked a better yellow. This is a very pale, like ecro instead of yellow. I wanted to make... Uh, somebody in the chat on Tuesday night said, oh, you should make one that's yellow. Well, I would, but it's got a white base to it, and at the time I didn't have enough yellow 
extra without digging in a whole pile <laughs> of, uh, um, I have a lot more squares than I have round drills. So um, I needed to dig for them. So I know I had a whole lot of white, so I was using the plain white for that. These are not white ABs, however, the ECRU is an ECRU AB. So it's got a little more shine to it in the wing. And then I thought for a cute little tail, I'll put the ecru there. I could have done the, the orange that I did for the nose. I could have made a cute little tail out of out of that. And maybe I should have used more of that in here. But anyway, what I did here was again around the, the nose and the mouth. And then it started uh, making full lines. And then in the back, to get over the bulge of the back of the head, I started straight lines around the back here. And then gussets in between lines to make the head, the back of the head wide. Um, the back of the tail, I just started with one, and then I put five around that, then seven around that, and then whatever worked out around the end, ends of that. And in the front, I did one layer all the way around the neck. And in the front, I started with the center seam and did a bunch of, I kind of tried to imagine the way the feathers would work. Like if you pet a duck, which way would the feathers go? Probably wouldn't work that way on the head, but um, the front, I thought it would go down, and that would eliminate a lot of the curve. So when it got to the wing, now I only have short, short pieces to do here and short pieces to do underneath. I don't have these big gussets that have to form uh, along the side. So that's the way that's going to be, and I'll show you in the next video the end of these things, um, one caution I wanted to say with this glue is sometimes it does puddle. You don't need a whole lot of it. But if you accidentally slush it over the edge and you're not going to use that edge right away, like you put the, the drills down and there's still uh, a wetness on the edges of it, take your finger and kind of roll it off because it gets rubbery right away. Roll off that extra rubber because when you try to put the glue down, the fresh glue down on top of it, um, the, the drill doesn't sink all the way down into it. It doesn't always activate on itself, so it has like a little bit of a bump. When the glue is dry, I can still roll it off, but um, the extra off. But I'd rather, when you put it on there, um, when you put it on when it's still wet, it's easier to just wipe off with the tissue or with your finger. And that's what I would suggest doing. When when you leave it go, don't leave any don't leave any glue slopping over the edge when you go to put it away. Okay. So that's it for the beginnings of this. I will show you in the next one uh, the the ones that I have finished including the lights and all that, and I will show it to you um, after they are, you know, polyurethaned and that kind of thing. Also, I would store the glue like this. I got a glass cup, and I'm storing the glue like this because it's already down to here. <laughs> Since this is my favorite glue now for this, uh, like I said, slight odor, but not a whole, it's not bad, not a whole big thing. So, and I am this, <laughs> I am down to a little stub of a wax pencil, so I had to push the the uh, foamy bit up on the end so I can still sharpen the very end of it, uh, which I will have to do again before I start again. It just takes a couple turns through it, one, two, three, and it's, it's ready again. Just make a little point on the end again. Okay, so I need your comment below if you made it this far as to whether I should put the, the clear the silvery crystals on here or put some kind of white on the rest of the, the unicorn here for my little girl, for my little crystal. All right, thanks for, for watching. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Don't forget our Tuesday night. Join our community on Tuesday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for our live chat. And um, 
have a wonderful day. Uh, there'll be a Bible study coming up soon, too. That's going to be on Friday mornings at 10 a.m., but you, ha you need a, a Zoom invite. So if you are interested in coming to a Bible study on uh, the Apocrypha, on the books of the Bible that that uh, haven't uh, that aren't included in the Protestant canon, uh, just give me an email at Wanda's work. <laughs> yeah, right. Wanda's workbasket at gmail dot com, and I will send you a Zoom invite. Okay, that's ten a.m. on Friday morning, Eastern Standard Time. All right. I will see you soon. Thank you for stopping by. Bye-bye.